We're now going to talk about the structure and functionality of the composite pattern. And this is going to give us a chance to talk a bit more about how the pattern is defined in the Gang of Four book. So the Gang of Four book gives intents for each of the patterns, and, and those intents are pithy statements of what the pattern is intended to do. Um, and this pattern, as we had mentioned before, when I gave the, the tree, the, the forest level overview, as opposed to the tree level overview, treats individual objects and multiple recursively composed objects in a uniform way. And as you can see, as we, as we just talked about, the structure enables that. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. So you should consider applying this pattern under certain circumstances. One, objects must be composed recursively. So as you can see here, for instance, the composite binary node contains other types of nodes. It contains a left child and a right child. And those left and right children could themselves be composites. They might be leaf nodes. They might be composite negate nodes. They could be other composite binary nodes. But the point is that at some level of usage, we don't know, we don't care really how they're defined. We just care that they're connected together in a tree-like fashion. Another applicability to mention here is you don't want to distinguish between individual nodes and composed or composite nodes. So for example, you can see that leaf nodes and composite nodes all share the same API and they share that API because they all inherit from component node. So that makes it real easy for them to be used in a common way. And, and we're able to, to use them in a common way in a manner that we'll talk about in more detail when we get to the iterator and visitor pattern. I'll foreshadow this when we talk about the bridge pattern next, which we should be able to get to today. And you'll see that what this enables us to do is we can do things like iterate through all the nodes in an expression tree and be able to apply some operation to them independently of what the node actually does. That decision about what the node is, is deferred to other parts of the software design, which makes it much more extensible and much more um, pleasant to work with. This is what the diagram looks like. If you look at the Gang of Four book, you'll see this diagram. And you can see that there's this abstract class or an interface called component, and it defines a bunch of abstract operations. You can tell something's an abstract class and an abstract uh, operation or abstract method when it's put in italics. So component is italicized and operation, add, remove, get child, those are all italicized as well. And then you can see through the magic of UML notation that leaf and composite inherit from component. And that's just the, that's the syntax, the visual syntax in UML that shows leaf node is a, is a child, is a subclass or a derived class of component as is composite. And then you can see that leaf node is not refined any further. It's going to just have, in this case, some operation to do something. It has no children, in other words. Conversely, you can see composite, and again, this is demonstrated through a little bit of UML, has zero or more children. That's what that little diamond with the arrow that ends up pointing back at the component means in, in UML notation. And the composite says there may be multiple children here. So think of like a think of like a subfolder in a directory that has other subfolders and files, for example. And in this case, the operation that's applied on composite will delegate or forward to all of its children and apply the operation on them. So that's what the composite does. But it has the same interface that component does. It just has a different implementation than leaf does. And clients are only going to access this whole structure through the API defined by the component. So in the context of our program, the client will be some other piece of software. In our case, it's going to be the bridge abstraction, which we'll talk about here shortly. And we'll talk about that when we discuss the bridge pattern. The component part is played by component node, which we've taken a little peek at. We saw it has these operations like item, left, right, and accept. And you'll notice that I, I didn't change the names here. I'm keeping the, keeping the names, the ones in the Gang of Four book. But of course, in our instantiation, the names will be different of the methods because they correspond to the domain of our expression tree, not just some abstract domain. And then there's different composite 
subclasses. These will be composite unary node, composite binary node, composite add node, composite subtract node, and so on and so forth. And they contain multiple subparts. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the leaf subclass or the leaf derived class. In our world, that's leaf node. That's the one that is going to actually store a number, like the number three or the number 52 or whatever. So that's a mapping from the pattern onto our particular realization of the pattern. And that's a, it's a beautiful thing when you can start seeing how to instantiate a general design by tying it down to particular incarnations or incantations in your program design space. That's a, a really great skill to, to hone. Believe me, you'll, you'll thank me later if you hone that skill now.